vision feels like an opening of the heart and there's like a daring and a, some, some courage in, in vision. I feel like vision, um, what right now I'm feeling is like it falters with doubt and it's strengthened with courage. And it's almost like this tunnel that's being projected outward through the heart and through the, yeah. the mind. It, it becomes more tangible and real when it's infused with conviction. Uh, but enough conviction, but enough humility to be open constantly, to be balanced and checked for accuracy, right? Mm. Uh, that's what it feels like. And it definitely feels like an outward going, uh, something powered by inner will. And by will, I mean focus and concentration into manifesting. <laughs> yeah. I, look, so this is amazing because your articula- the reason I'm giving you these questions is, you know, it's, you're actually giving me, I think you're actually giving me more value <laughs> than I'm giving you, mate. I'm like, oh, that's so good. I can see that. That's beautiful. That makes sense. I've been trying to describe that for ages. He just did it better. I'm not going to do a normal intro because this is not a normal podcast. So team, this is the probably the longest podcast I've ever done. And we've cut it up into sections and clips, obviously for your viewing pleasure so that you can just go through the list like a food menu. But this was done with the creative, the artists, the man, just the incredible soul, uh, Lubomir Azarov. And I'm probably not saying his last name correctly, but Lubomir is, how do I explain Lubomir? He's human, but he's done something incredible, which is create a, a masterpiece of work that was considered, it, did, it went viral uh, when it was released. And the piece of work that I'm talking about is called In Shadow. That was my first contact with this guy. Now, I highly recommend and suggest that you watch In Shadow before you listen to this uh, podcast uh, or watch it for that matter the other thing is you can find him on rebel wisdom as well doing an interview with those guys this guy is a tool to force with his own mind and his creative talent and he and i had a field day i mean we got into shit to the in yeah we definitely got into shit with our partners because we just lost track of time time oh my god you got math bishop we lost track of time twice so we had to do the podcast in two different times just to get things done and get through what we wanted to talk about and we catch up regularly now and we're building a project that we'll share with you all in due time um but it comes from this place of what Lubomir wanted to tackle which is this crazy problem this profound pandemic if not epidemic that we're in that has everything to do with our mind and our heart and our potential and really it's about This whole podcast is about the process of waking up or becoming aware, becoming who you could be and really tackling those really difficult challenges, which is how do we deal with the complexity and the chaos that we do have to confront on a day-to-day basis? Uh, And again, it's different for everyone, depending on where you live, who you are and your own bioeconomy of what makes you, you. And we cover a number of topics that I actually will not go into, but they start with things like how do we open our minds and hearts to what's ahead? How do we stay behaviorally flexible? What does all the symbolism mean within his video? Um, Again, that's why I want you to watch it. He also identifies the fact that this was the only way to get across what he was seeing and feeling. And it's a calling to all artists out there. So if you're a creative or you're interested in your own development, then hey, this this is the podcast for you. And I'm just gonna let this one sit with you for some time. And I look forward to the feedback. And again, thank you for the emails that everyone shares and the support on the channel. Um, I really, really appreciate it. It means the world. And without further ado, team, let's get after it and enjoy what is a pretty wicked podcast um, with Lubomir. Enjoy. This is really the first time we've ever got to speak ever, which is cool because I don't actually know you from a bar of soap, but what I do know is that your work is and you probably get a look i know you'll get a lot of praise but the thing is there's a lot of art and there's a lot of creative work out there but what you've created i still think in its infancy of getting people's attention i mean it's got what 3.6 million views right now um that's only on youtube and you're an animator a director 
uh, you're a creative at heart and you're an artist at your core. And I think the, the, the work that I'm talking about, I'm like not telling anyone just yet as it, when I, when I watched it, I watched it with my, um, I watched it with my partner. I watched it with my family. I've actually got a video I filmed of them not realizing that they're all watching it. You know, when people watch something and they just, you, they're not moving. Yeah. Uh, I know it's just amazing to be watching people who watch it because you can just see them just like mm. what's going on. What am I, what am I seeing here? What am I, what, what's, what's being, you know, what am I, it's, it's like, I worked out that there was something like, I could be wrong, but I, every three to four seconds, a new scene. And I went, well, if a, you know, a picture paints a thousand words, you, you wrote about 260,000 words <laughs> in, in 13 minutes. And I thought, this is interesting. This is just unreal. What it made me feel was, was the most powerful reason why I reached out to you. So um, I want to welcome you uh, warmly to the podcast, mate. So welcome. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. And um, yeah, actually, I, I just reread prior to this, I reread your, your email and it was super kind open authentic and very invigorating to to hear that like that those strong words of connection with with that piece um do you do you i mean i had to ask i was like a little bit like when i wrote it i was like oh he probably gets lots of emails like this like you probably have got a lot of them because i mean but i just wondered i was like but sometimes people cannot reach out because they're scared like they're worried you know mm -hmm. you know because that type of work i mean it, it man i was scrubbing it I was scrubbing just to just take in every frame of the video, like just, and that's what got me curious. I was like, I, I know um, for, the, for the listeners out there, this was it, the video, the, 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 I wouldn't even call it a video. The, the art that we're talking about is called In Shadow and it's a, a modern odyssey. That's the, the, the next tag part. And it's this 13 minute video that is just, like, I guess it's open to interpretation, but it's a really, it's, it's a, a beautiful symbolic representation of what the world is going through. And I mean, Lubomir, we, we, we try and develop companies for a living. So we build, we, we build teams, we work in defense, we, and we're boutique in our size, but our reach is global. And we went into technology and we did all these things. And the, the reason I write, the reason I bring that up is you once you once you've come in contact with a couple of thousand people viscerally um you can see the pattern and it's you know and and this is where i was like man how did you tap into that how did you capture that so take us yeah what inspired you to create the work hmm yeah um well what inspired me was just just my my increasing um understanding uh, if I can even like claim that understanding of what was happening around me, uh, around us of this, I started seeing grand narratives that we were downloading that were kind of curated for us by, yeah. by culture as a whole. Um, and by certain, what I, I saw as certain actors with certain intentions. Yeah. And I saw, I, I saw that largely we function on data the, and information and narratives that are given to us and that we don't have much sovereignty and independence and individuality to actually uh, sift through that and actually make sense of what is true, what is not, what is to our benefit, what is, uh, is, is you know, is not. Mm -hmm. um, and as I started piecing things together, I had this moment of, of, of dissonance within the, the dominant culture that I was in. And this was around my 30s when I first started, you know, playing with the idea. And, um, and yeah, I started getting, because I'm a visual artist, mm. I started getting these, these inklings, these episodes. As in, if I would read an article that hit hard and, and, and I would, uh, something that I would understand and see through, um, I would get an image about it, sort of an absurdist, um, surreal kind of image that really spelled out the situation in a, in almost like a, a stamp, as opposed to having to, to verbally, you know, describe the situation. And so I started stringing together a series of these images and, um, sat down and, and, and I was listening to this one piece of music that inspired me by the two artists uh, from Sweden, carbon based life forms. Yeah. I listened to tracks on repeat 
And that track just helped me get into this very, uh, a certain state that then started aligning all the imagery as I surveyed the landscape of our modern existence, uh, our institutions, our interpersonal relationships. <laughs> well, wow. broad strokes. Yeah, man. No, I know. I was going to say, this is amazing. Cause this is what I was so fascinated because a lot of people who are really competent in what they do, usually they won't assume they're competent because it's narcissistic <laughs> because there's a, there's a healthy dose of humility with what, what you do and how you do what you do. But what, what fascinated me was that, how did you like i really want to dive into like when was the first time you noticed these narratives these grand narratives this this and because i know it's so complex like lubo it's it's one of the things that i i found myself talking to myself about before this podcast is it doesn't matter what we talk about the 13 minutes covers more yeah like that's what i found really funny i was like it wouldn't matter if i spoke to you for two days it still wouldn't yeah. even cover close to the ground you covered in 13 minutes. Yeah. And, and that's what blows my mind is it's like, I'm like, God damn, I don't know what, there's so many things I want to ask this guy that just can't be fit into the segment. So I wanted to go with the major things, which was that, what, what did you have to deal with at the initial startings of this project? Like, cause you know, you could have not done it easily and it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I, I'd love to discuss that. I just want to touch upon one point, which is yeah, sure. uh, what you brought up, brought up, which is the, um, God, what, I just completely short circuited. Was it the grand narratives? No, it wasn't the grand narratives. Wow. I just completely short circuited, but let's, we'll go back. <laughs> Maybe it will, it will, yeah, it'll, it'll, come, get, it'll come back. Oh yeah. 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 Sorry about that. It's basically the, the ability of these 30 minutes of this visual narrative, the status ah, yeah. feed to give us more than, than we could talk about. And I've been very hesitant to publicly speak about this for that reason, because I don't want any of uh, the limitation of the limitation of my words to interfere with the signal of the piece in any way. Uh, not only that, but also, you know, the limitations of my personality of my social persona and all these things. Wow. I don't, yeah, don't want to get <laughs> hey, that's, Isn't that you brought up, you, you've now actually brought up a very interesting point. This is, this is something that I've been talking to John, John Vivecki about. And because I'm, I've, because of men and women like him, I, I, even though I had a defense background and a business background, I've gone into cognitive science because I'm absolutely fascinated in the actual potential of people. And one of the things that you just said then has just blown my mind because can you know things that you can't articulate? And right. it's, yeah. And so we use drama and imagery to share that with others. So it's very, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. You know, why, why put yourself out in a way where it's kind of dangerous when you can put your strongest card forward, which is actually how you express yourself through your work. And I just thought, you know, that's yeah, interesting point, man. That's really interesting. Hmm. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, and I guess I, I can just, I, guess I, I can continue with where and how I started the, yeah, the please. piece. What, what, potential difficulties there were. Well, look, I was working for uh, uh, one of the major animation studios. I was working on one of their sequels, uh, not very inspiring work. You know, I always like to improve my craft. Um, I was working as a storyboard artist at that time. Yep. And I was increasingly becoming more and more sensitive to the urgency, which I was feeling personally, of the evolving um, degradation of, of, of what I saw as truth meaning yeah. and the dissonance between uh there was a, a deep disharmony between what we perceive to be our reality and what i saw beneath it i also started seeing our complicity in it and again as i said in my view i started charting based on that that there were bad actors involved that were <laughs> using <laughs> Yeah. Can you please describe the moment that was happening? Can you take me back to a moment when that's happening? Because I can only imagine your face. I see like <laughs> you sitting in a cafe just with a cup, not moving, just like, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> I can see yeah. things I can't describe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just love, yeah. Is that how, yeah. how is it showing up emotionally? I mean, that's a, there's a big bag of emotions there. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't arrive at this place uh, in a, in a moment. It was, right. a cumulative, yeah, it was a cumulative thing uh, it was a process for sure and um yeah there's within um, my informal mentor calls it uh calls this process the dark unveiling so yeah, it's, wow. it's within a process of self-growth of unfolding 
of you know I'll, I'll use the beautiful word soul <laughs> unfolding yeah, of our soul I, please use it uh, of the psyche etc we we need to come to terms not only with our own darkness because it's inherent within our existence on earth uh, mm. it's but also how that connects to the darkness and the unconscious destructiveness of of the collective whole right mm -hmm. so that dark yeah. unveiling um just the way we when we deny it within ourselves we suppress and, and we we are then ruled by what we suppress mm. but we deny it outside as well when we paint everything with uh you know as it's okay it's fine nothing really is happening we mm. suppress that knowledge and what is in the dark remain gets stronger and and controls us and manipulates uh us more right mm. um there's that, that, so I, there's going to be a whole cohort of people. This is one of the things I loved. I, I heard you say to, um, on Rebel Wisdom. It was one of the key things is that it, there was a very deep care on your behalf with how you were going to do the work mm. and not to make it too cliche um, and then also not to make it too over the head. And, I, and I, one of the things that you've just pointed out, I, I, I really want listeners to enjoy stuff because – Funnily enough, when I mention things like, you know, I, I will talk about people taking responsibility and doing some of the work they need to do. And but when we, I want to, do you have a definition that you refer to for the, for people, the, the shadow? Do you, do you have a definition that you use for you um, rather than the definition? Cause I prefer people's definitions than, than say an, uh, an academic version. Yeah, for sure. Um, thanks for asking that. I think it's so important. I, I more and more speak about the shadow. I name it the lower self. It's not my naming and, you know, people use that and different teachers use that. Mm -hmm. And the lower self to me is, um, again, yeah, I'll try to distance myself from any academic. Or yeah, young please people. do. Cause I, I, it's, it's, this is so much more about ac accessibility, um, and giving people that, Oh shit, that make that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So to me, it is the, those aspects of us, which are stuck in, in pain, in wounding, in misperception and distortion of reality based on formative, um, trauma formative experiences, which create, have created patterns in us, mm. mechanisms through which we bypass experiencing the foundational pain. And thus we use these patterns to interface with reality, right? And, and in a way that lower self uh, of course, that's a, a very basic way, I guess, to put it. But that lower self is is a whole bunch of these mechanisms working subperceptually. Mm -hmm. So they remain in the unconscious. However, they're constantly driving the, the social mask, the social persona, yeah. which we then use to advertise ourselves and in, into the world and interface with the world in a way that's economically viable within the sort of like the 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 ecosystem of the social sphere <laughs> right? yeah mate it makes total sense yeah those who haven't watched haven't yet been able to watch the the video i think you should definitely continue listening but go watch that video because <laughs> it makes i'm as you're talking i can i'm now seeing the images back in my mind so it, it it's like a re, it's a really it's a it's really a powerful refresher and I think it, uh, Lubo, one of the things that really touched me was that even when I was watching it, it was actually, it's a very hard thing to discuss with all my peers because I'm ex-military, but it was also why the reason I left. Um, I started reading material that I couldn't explain to people. Mm. They just think you're batshit crazy. Um, mm. You know, and I went on to then use those skills to build an incredible company. And I still tell people it really, it, 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 I mean this when I say it, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It won't it won't matter. It, it doesn't matter how much stuff you think you have. It won't matter. It really, that deep, deep alignment with who you are and how you can bring your magic to the world. And that's the word I would actually use um, is probably where you'll find the most meaning making. And that's where I found that one of the things that I noticed was there was, there was so many, so much imagery with regards to, and I'm not sure if it was just my interpretation, but there was, it was pedophilia. There was, backdoor deals there was corruption there was alienate and alienation there was uh purgatory there was you know suppression of cultures there was misinterpretation and the rise of incorrect actors based on the, what they thought was correct so there was these unhealthy like you said the deep traumas 
and, and I think that was the biggest thing I noticed was the, the biggest feeling that I had through the first three quarters of it, probably four, four fifths was this deep pain, like just a deep pain. And I, and I, and I wrote, I wrote, cause I, I like to really, so 13 minutes, I think I watched it about 14 times. Cause I, I was like, this is like, a, it's like, it's actually like a lecture. It was like really weird. It was like, I was learning as I was watching every time. Mm. And I explained it. My partner said, you know, she, she says, what was the biggest thing that you noticed about? It? And I said, the biggest thing here that caught me was I said, it's actually, it's the responsibility. You know, we want our sovereignty, but I mean, there's some terms we're going to need to unpack, but I think that the biggest thing I noticed was that there's a lot of it's historical momentum. And mm. even though <clears throat> we can get really angry at the system. Um, and when I say we, I mean, anyone that's got any sort of judgments or, uh, reserves for doing any sort of work in the world or holding back in themselves or not wanting to play their full part or going really hard and rebellious, you know, there are, there are both under function and over function. And I think one of the things that became apparent was that the best thing you can do is it quite literally take responsibility for what's going on in your immediacy and then start to scale from there. And I, and, I, and I found that that's the only way to interrupt any sort of historical pattern that seems to be unhealthy, um, including yourself. So it's just, mm-hmm. so, how, so how did you, how did you go about, because there was a comment I know you made that was like, y- you almost wanted to show people things. Like there was like this, you said like, it was like a troll, like, <laughs> like, yeah, like a troll, like aspect. In, you said, you mentioned, yeah. you're like, I need to show people, you yeah. need to see this. What, what was going on then? And when was that? Well, it's kind of, it was that youthful rebellious energy, even though, you know, I was in my young thirties making it. Um, yeah, it was, I, I think the alienation I felt within my peers and my peer group, you mm-hmm. know, the people around me and just the society at large, part of it was me projecting my own parts that were not purified yet, projecting it on society. And, you know, I've had to own up to that and I'm still working with it. But part of it was genuinely seeing, um, apathetic and disinterested populace which was driven by trends and automated uh impulses mm. automated scripts that were not of their own choosing and that i i suppose there's an inherent uh feeling of justice or righteousness where i get i get triggered and in a way into <laughs> righteous <laughs> righteous righteous indignation and yeah. righteous anger and and I, I use I see that as a tool when it's when it's competently and maturely uh, utilized as you know you very well know that a warrior needs needs that and, and to channel it in a healthy way because yeah. that's any time you know if someone pushes anyway I'm not going to go into that but no you should you should do it I'm I'm keen that's why I'm asking like this I yeah. always tell you when I'm speaking I'm this is, if we were sitting at a table having a coffee chat and this wasn't recorded these would be the things yeah. I'd ask so I, yeah. I, I genuinely want to know. Cool, cool. Yeah, because I, 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 I can go on so many tangents, but please. Tangent please, away, I, man. I love tangents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king of tangents. Yeah. Oh, good. Excellent. Um, so, so, yeah, it was that sort of energy. And as a slight tangent, I just want to say I see what's happening right now is this. There's a lot of indignation and youthful, rebellious energy that is being subverted because there's a lot of shadow in our youthful people within this yeah. modern, decrepit, meaningless society, which is yeah. now being subverted. And there's a lot of trauma. It's being funneled into destructive uh, aspects. And of course, destruction can, is necessary sometimes, but it has to be channeled to the right place. Mm. And so it's channeled in a way that is, is really obfuscating what's really happening right now. And it's sowing chaos. And so there's a lot of wounding that is, yeah. So uh, there is a difference between, you know, the, righteous indignation channeled with a mature, I guess, vision toward yep. ultimately, even if it needs to destroy something, it's for the creation of something wholesome. It creates more harmony. There is love in it. You know, we have to, we have to judge these things by their fruits. And, and <laughs> yeah, it's kind of very obvious when we tune in, is there love or no love? Is there understanding and empathy or not? Yeah. So, so that, to, that to me though, that not even, in, I can only talk for me because I'm in me all the time. You know, like there's, I got to be careful not to make broad brush statements, but with the data and the research we've been doing, um, and then that's why I connected with John and a few other um, people in their fields. I just went, this is such a big project. This is gonna like, and there's that healthy sense of urgency. Um, like it's almost like I explained to people, I said, you know, it's not, it's not this entrepreneurial drive. It's none of that shit. I said that urge that you had Lubo is, um, 
that to me is what, what we train people in, which is that purpose, mission, and vision. Actually, when you've actually got a, when you've got that deep purpose and it's activated and you've got a clear vision for what you want to bring to the world, you become this very on mission person. Like you, you know, you know what you're looking to do, you know what you need to do. And even at times when you get really tough because you're so clear and aligned, and I'm not saying perfect, you, you can actively engage in a co-creative manner where things end up working for you. But in the moment, that isn't always what you feel. You'll feel a shitload of resi- resistance. You'll feel deep, you'll deep, you'll, you'll feel a mix of emotions and pain. But the thing is, there's a, long, there's a longevity feeling to it. Like, you know that this is actually sustainable. And I think the thing that you just highlighted then is that there is a key distinction between people who are genuinely being like genuinely, I don't hate to use the word victim, but they're genuinely victims of a, of a system they never interacted with in any, in any co-creative way where they're, they're actually suffering because of it. And then there are people who are moving into it, but actually propagating it. And there's, there's, you know, you, you, this is almost like a land. You gotta be careful. I mean, I gotta be careful how I say it, but it's yeah. this is like you said, it comes back to things like being able to take a look at yourself and, rec- and, and, and reflect. And, I, and I'm curious, like when you were going through this bit, how did, you know, I know you were noticing the landscapes and those things, but I'm all, I'm almost interested in, in the, in the earlier years, Lubo, because in order for you to have those types of awarenesses, you've got to have, moments of pause or moments of question or there was a there was there was a clash so what i wouldn't say when did you wake up so to speak but when did you when you when did your eyes start to open because hmm. to me the reason i i asked this is because i'd actually almost be my my major arc tangent is i want to talk about all the professional and and the magic and how you chose your styles and Cause I know there's a whole bunch of artists out there are going to go, what paintbrush does he use? You know, <laughs> like all that stuff. But I'm like, I know a whole bunch of men and especially men uh, and even some younger women that we work with. And then, then around this age, around 18 to 30, the amount of disharmony, some of these people are feeling, I, I just am blown away by uh, the, just the barrage, the disconnect, the disharmony with themselves, the devices, the technology, their own culture. Yeah. And then I think, fuck, you know, what did I do when I was going through something like that? And I'm curious what you did in your early years. Like, had, when did you find that your eyes started to open? Um, yeah. So it's what you're saying, totally. The fragmentation, the the distractions that pull us away and that we can get lost in are so many right, at this time. So it's very difficult. I, I can really sympathize with, with young people. But yeah, when did it start? Um, I think it started... It's difficult to say. I mean, my curiosity has always been there. Mm. And I think many of us can sort of see through. We, I think there's a palpable sense that something is not right, that this mm. is not all there is. And I think most of us feel that. It's just at what level of perception does that really hit? And I think the one difference, I guess, that, that sort of, uh, you know, had you, let's say, pick me out from the crowd to speak to me was that I acted on it and I carry through fully with it, mm. right? Because a lot of us, I think, um, carry the seeds for a lot of this work, but yeah, we, don't have, we but we don't have the the discipline, the conviction, um, and the, I guess the encouragement or whatever it is for the ultimate follow through to mm. to dig through that resistance, as you mentioned, which is one of the greatest adversaries to sharpen our blade against. However, we that's not framed that way for us as a culture that that resistance is not only our teacher, but it's a necessary impediment for us to 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 harness and then to darkness really is is super necessary for the evolution of our consciousness of our being and rise back into unity so the middle path of equilibrium you know for us to be in that sweet spot of the you know widely known as the flow state but it's much more divine and and sublime than that is is knowing the resistance knowing that no Again, tangent. Sorry, no, do, do you, you're not. You're good. I'm. I'm yeah. thoroughly pegging about ten different things you've just said, which are genuinely amazing. Like they, you know, it's funny you said that this that start that you know that there's you know one of your strengths is your ability to uh, express through image and 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 animation just the the almost tectonic amount of 
undertow that you feel that you need to put into the world. So I, I, I I'm, I'm curious as to your inner critic, yeah. <laughs> just, you might yeah. sound like an interesting inner critic. And I, and then the thing is I tell people sometimes, uh, cause we have with some, athletes, some athletes, it's like, it's not about turning it on and off. Sometimes some people, they work well with it if they know how to dance with it. And I think one of the things that you just pointed out, which is really, really interesting is I've always told people, and it's it, it was true to me because with the military experience, I was like, man, no one would choose to do that. Like, it's just, I was like, man, like we used to say this thing, the army, you joined the army, the army didn't join you. And I was like, oh, that's such a catch out. But we, we, would, we always said, look, we were either laughing so much because we laughed because we knew if we didn't laugh, we'd cry. But I could say that every, every difficult thing we did most of the time, I'd say the large majority of the time has given me resources you just wouldn't be able to buy. And so that, that natural resistance, the darkness, also the difficulty with having to make ethical and moral decisions. Um, I would say that the way you've described the shadow and the darker side of things, you've done it, I think in a very, I'd say in such a healthy way where it's a lot of people do it. it they, what I've noticed is especially in some circles Lubo is that there's a thing going on where there's a lot of bypassing. Yeah. Uh, like there's so much bypassing through either external distraction or internal distraction. Uh, you know, a, to, an over an overindulgence in the senses and an overindulgence in the intellect. Like it's just becomes, it comes, becomes intellectual and overly academic. And because there can be a lot of words that can be a false sign of I, I've got something when in fact understanding isn't just language and it's the whole emotional bioeconomy that you've got as a person and, and how that propagates through time. So I think, you know, one, one of the things that I'd like you to actually dive back into is the sharpening, the sharpening and how the shadow helps you sharpen rather than okay. it, because it can be degradative if you don't work, work with it and pay attention to it. Totally. Yeah. So tell me, please unpack that because yeah. that, that you were going down there and I was, that was, you were on point with yeah. it. Okay. So yeah, for sure. I'll stay on point with this one. So the, I think the most important thing for me uh, that helped with the resistance was being magnetized by the, by the final uh, purpose of this piece. The fact that it had meaning and the fact that again, I had this righteous indignation at, at just wanting to show it to people to fling it and just be like, can I swear or Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm watching you. I'm like, do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like fucking look at this yeah. look, you know, like that, that kind of like thing that came deep from the belly all the way from the root chakra. Just boom. so yeah, having that as a magnet, then whenever I had resistance, I could always tap into that and know that this was greater than me potentially, because after all, I was just in my bedroom, you know, for, for that year. Uh, grinding at this. I wasn't showing it to anyone. I just didn't think, um, you know, people around me could really understand or I could describe what I'm doing until it was done. Yeah. And <laughs> um, you thought about it longer than you took to do it. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I put it to the side and I just went on with my life because it was a quite a daunting task. I realized it and it overwhelmed me and mm. that overwhelm was justified. And I believe that uh, my, my nervous system, my intuition, knew that I needed to, to sort of like work a, a bit more on my craft, on my, on my presence and my ability to carry through with the task. And so a few years later, when I was su super demoralized by my work and saw that I had a certain talent and that I was not giving to the world, I was not gifting. I was not sharing my gift. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, trying to break through also the inherent selfishness that, that many of us carry you know, for, for me and mine. And, and so that's when I, I quit work and, uh, you know, I moved on with my parents mm -hmm. and thank, thank, you know, I, I'd like to thank them and, and, yeah. and, and honor the gift of, of giving me this, the space to, to carry this yeah, mission. Do that work. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it is. is that's the feeling. I, I was yeah. like, that's such a beautiful way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a accompanying social humility that, that happens when you move back in with your parents at 30. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But that, that was fine. I'm like, it's okay. Uh, it's all going to. <laughs> yeah, all these. Yeah. But is that, this is funny, like on a side, on a bit of a tangent, if we call it, we can call it those little, there's all these little tiny little arcs will go on. The, there's like a weird thing that goes on where it's like, is that, 
it's really, is it more of a cultural clash more than anything? When people move in, they're like, oh, fuck, I moved in with my parents. But like, there's yeah. like, but you did it because you were going on a, you were doing literally the deep work. I was going to say, yeah. it was almost like a video game-esque kind of boss battle for you in that year where you created it. I actually think it's yeah. quite, it's really interesting. A lot of, I know a lot of people think, oh, it's really, really hard. But I think it's probably, was it, I think my projection of it is it, was it, was it not harder before you started? Because of the, just the brewing and the thinking and the formulating and the observing and the studying. And then when you got into it, that was like the focal, that was the pouring in, the concentrating, the deep attention. Yeah, totally. It was just want to say that, yeah, if, if I agree to the framing that, you know, living with my parents, if I agree with that social framing and I have a sufficient amount of suppressed shame, then I will be activated. Yeah. And there was still some <laughs> of that, but not, not enough. I've reframed many things since. But yeah, I can I, imagine. Yeah. So, um, no, just to answer your question though. Um, so I did, I did maybe, I did some of the conceiving idea, ideation before I started, but it wasn't, uh, fully thought out. It wasn't, uh, strung together in this, you know, rough script of the hero's journey of, of how every institution and every part of the film was, was strung together. Um, so I still had to think of that. I didn't have all the visuals necessarily. I had them kind of, set up but not fully uh, realized and then of course it came to um i had to commit to actually illustrating everything in a, in a way yeah. anime <laughs> had um, to actually commit <laughs> i love how you say yeah. that i had to actually commit it was almost like slow motion like i had to do the work <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah man and then in you know there was also while doing the actual production of it i had to there were parts that I, I took spent more time than uh, than I did on others in which I had to really fine tune the image to a degree where it gave me a felt sensation of the, I wanted it to be accurate to my feeling. So it mm -hmm. had to be true yeah. based well, on how so I felt about it. But if, if it wasn't calibrated, it would not hit the audience in the way that I intended it to. Right. Mm. So there are still a few images that I didn't fully emotionally uh, cohere with. But I put them in there and I, you know, I just had to because I had to finish it. But I'll tell you that the strongest images that I feel still when I see it, I feel the impact of were, I don't recall all of the ones, but those are the ones where I, I, I got the, the download of the image. Yeah, I man. sat down and I drew it and I, I, it just felt right. It just hit they were the like spot. The mount, like the mountain peaks, the, the keys, the, the yeah. key ones that stood out. What, what were they? Sorry, the, the mountain peaks? Uh, yeah, like, oh, sorry, uh, metaphorically, I was saying they're the ones that were oh, right. obvious to you, the ones that really stood out. Yeah, some of them were, I think, um, near the beginning when the three individuals uh, in suits, the working people are flipped upside down with the clock moving. Um, That's crazy, that one, yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. in many ways that, that just felt really right to me. Um, I think there were some things within the, the medical slash uh, nutritional area as well yeah. pharmaceutical. You had a clever way of showing um the vegetables looked like tumors <laughs> yeah 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 and people you know i think there was a i can remember very clearly that there was almost like man this is the clever this is the cleverness of what's been done because i was watching and i could hear the voice in my head of what a doctor or a parent would say well good boy good bo good girl you've eaten your vegetables mm -hmm. so there's this kind of propagating layer of not just even the, the the overarching narrative of a society and its culture, but also that localized version of it, how it's propagated by, you know, and this is where you pointed out the enemy isn't some, you know, we can, we can, you could say there are people who are key uh, leaders in the propagation of certain things like this, but in themselves, they still have their own sovereignty and they're just completely oblivious to, or, you know, or, or, or worse, they are not oblivious to it and they're stuck in a momental thing where they are just, it's they're just desensitized by the damage they're propagating or pushing into the world. So it's kind of like, yeah. I, I don't think there's any one person to blame. And I think it's very dangerous to blame any one person. I mean, I mean, this is the whole thing about Hitler. It's like, you can blame yeah. Hitler, but who kept cheering him on? Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. He wasn't put there just, I mean, he wasn't a God at all. He was just a man. And that's the frightening thing. I think a lot of people try to think that they try to hope that there's some reptilian God or some reptilian, you know, super race that's controlling us, which is to me is just a dangerous uh, narrative of avoidance of responsibility because yeah. even if it is, it's still, you still got to do something. <laughs> like, yeah, totally. 
<laughs> I do firmly believe I do firmly believe that we live in a free um, free will uh, mm. you know world and and yeah it's in a way I feel that there are forces that work through us to the degree that we are not a, awake to what mm. is happening mm. to uh, to the degree that we're not awake to the sub perceptual mechanisms that are driving our decisions actions our sexual drives our mm. drive of will or whatever it is the the need to subjugate others the need to neurotically achieve um etc cetera, etc cetera. so i feel i yeah. see it the way i see it as more like disowned collective forces and there's like destructive in a and a generative and a degenerative force. I've been mm-hmm. framing that more and more for myself, and it makes a lot of sense, especially you, from. Yeah, please. Do you do you see things when you speak? Like, do you? Well, I don't mean that like some in some weird way. I mean genuinely, because you're so visual. Do you, yeah. Are you describing what you're seeing? Are you are you are you, are you trying to paint something you want to see when you speak? Um, often I do speak from a, a, a kind of like a general sense of a visual. Right. See like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Visual like coming together. Yep. Almost like diagrams, stuff like that. Well, it, it kind of like, and, and what you, and you kind of throw the feeling up to, is more like a review. Like the feeling is like a, the Geiger counter for you. So you're, you're checking in on how you speak, what you're seeing, the feeling that comes with it. And then it's, it's a package. I'm just, I'm just so curious because it, there is such a, a very unconscious competence to what you do. So there's a whole lot of things that are going on and for that to line up for you, there's like a, ha, oh, yep. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, even if you can't fully articulate it, there's a, there's an image and then there's a, there's the feeling and then there's a sensation, you know, how does that, is that showing up? Is that, is that a much more concentrated version in the world and how am I, how is it feeling for me internally? So what are the, I, I really want to go back a few paragraphs though, cause I, we've got the ups, the, you know, the people that are upside down with the spinning clock, what, and the, 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 the vegetable one or the fruit one, which was pretty, the apple was pretty, yeah, like, I mean, this is, you've, have you heard of Dr. Zach Bush? Yeah, I, I listened to his uh, recent interview on, on the current yeah, situation. And so that, that was the first thing that came to mind when I saw those fruit and vegetables. I was like, you Ooh. know, what is it? Less than, something frightening. It was like less than 10% of Americans have the microbiome required to keep their bodies operational. I was like, oh, Jesus. And they, they reckon, you know, well, your gut health controls 90% of your dopamine. And Ooh. it's like, you know, you're not feeling good for some reason. It's like it's you know what's going on in the gut and then, then i think you had one of the scenes that really i actually tagged the times um there was the one that was really profound to me there was a lot that there was a there was a lot that really hit me but there was one scene where it's at nine minutes 22 mm. and the scene is the the zoomed out kind of like you 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 almost took almost a it was I know it wasn't German, but you there was I, I believe there was a borrowing of some of the old imagery where there was there was a safeguarding, there was the 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 blimps, the missiles, mm. the guard, and then the, the, the suppression or the or the just the boxing in of society. But it was to me that was so mm. oh that it was so um so pe- people are so hopelessly connected to the system that they're it's 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 the whole uh it's the whole morpheus thing it's like they people aren't ready to be unplugged almost to a point and this is yeah. this we're so hopelessly dependent on the system that people will fight to protect it and it's it's and i've had these discussions with my peers and 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 they they you know they they talk about it they say like i had a, a i have a, a really close friend in the military and he a lot of friends in the military. Unfortunately, I've lost a lot of them too, which sucks. Mm-hmm. But it's one of the one of the it's one of the unfortunate side effects of joining a, a game where there's no real respawn. And one of the things that I spoke to him about was said, "Do you really think what you're doing is doing what you think it's doing?" Mm-hmm. And you know, he's a smart man, and he uh, and he said, "I actually get what you're saying to him." And he goes, "I'm so far in though now." Yeah, and I'm like, man, you know, there's that, there's so much momentum in that area where it's like, but I'm like, you do know you can, you can always jump shit, man. You've got a lot of skill, you've got a lot of talent, 
I mean, this is something we help a lot of defense guys with anyway, which is that transition and transformation from one world to another. And um, there's a learning curve, I guess it's difficult, but that to me was a, that was a massive, in, that was such an interesting insight because there's a lot of people who are in those areas, Lubo, where they just, they've got momentum, they've got their career paths, they've, but it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to say, but you know, I was very fortunate when I made the jump, I didn't have any kids at the time. I only just had my initial relationship, but it's, it's, there are times where I think that people could make and they, sh- they must make those decisions that um, are really, really, really hard to make. Um, yeah. as, and, and, I, and I think, I think just to actually bring it back to you, because it's very easy for you to say that you just followed your natu- natural inclinations and your curiosity, you know, but you had to then, you, had to, you still had to do the work. Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, I suppose there are, there are pivotal choices in certain moments where you choose to go this or that way, uh, to see or unsee, to see a more convenient thing, um, to avoid an unpleasant inner emotion. Yep. And the more we avoid those, th- those unpleasant discomforts within us, I think the more we, are, we remain enclosed to a dominant uh, mm. view of reality. Because uh, individuating and stepping outside of, of our social group is a painful experience. It's extremely painful to be socially ostracized and isolated. Mm-hmm. And it requires quite, a, quite a, a certain level of embodiment or quite a... Um, a and this is not speaking about me because I'm trying to... I'm venerating this as I try to inspire potentially anyone who's listening. Yeah, man, absolutely. But it requires a certain um, capacity to withstand the discomfort that comes uh, when you when you forego the you know the, the narrative that we can easily step into and just follow the moves and, and pick the items on the menu and live according to those items, but we step into a no man's land. <laughs> we yeah. we step into a no man's land when we when we choose to to follow truth, and truth is a path for the sovereign spirit which. You know, it's a, it's, an, it's a path that has many rewards, but it's also a very difficult path. And at any point, you are encouraged to let it go for, yeah. the, ease, for the ease of participating in a, in a society that makes sense. Because it's super... How, yeah, that's, a really, that yeah. You, that's really well said. That was really well said, Lebo. Like, that's really on point. Like, the ease of just fitting in. Yeah. And, I, you know, I see that... I feel that those choices are happening every day. Like during this time of COVID, there are, you know, those of us who are um, eager to inform ourselves and, and deal with actual data, with real data, not interpretations by these authorities yep. uh, are being put in a situation where I'm, I constantly have to make choices based on those people around me and based on their narrative bubble that they're within, right? Mm. My narrative bubble clashes with theirs. And, and, mm. you know, sometimes I can, uh, I have to forego my, my, my conviction and my truth for the sake of uh, diplomacy or, you know, ex- mm. other, other considerations. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. How much am I sacrificing? How much is my culture and my immediate interests within, you know, I live in a city and that's a bubble of, of uh, synthetic artificial living made of man's minds, you know, that's right. You know, <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, beautifully man put man, beautifully yeah. put. Yeah. And, and, and so we, you know, living in a city is like, um, it, it asks you to constantly submit to, you know, it's, and it's a choice. That's my choice to constantly submit to the rules of, of, of conduct here. But there's a willing, sorry. Okay. So but there's a, yeah. a key, a key thing there though, Lubo, is that there's a key, there's a, there's a willingness to be part of something, but also take part in your own duty of care. Okay. Yes. So I would say there's nothing wrong with affording, or utilizing what's afforded to you thanks to those who previously came before you. Cause I, I love that you said something previously, which I always ask people, I said, you know, every time, you know, you interact with your own environment, slow down and pay attention to what it is you're actually interacting with. You're not interact. I'm not interacting with a microphone or a computer. These are just simple low resolution icons in my mind. Whereas if I really think about what I'm interacting with here, I was explaining to them some of our clients during the week. It's, you know, we've become so obsessed with things rather than the thinking. And it's actually the thinking that's deeply valuable than the thing. The thing is so temporary, but the thinking, the thinking is, is the most beautiful thing we've got. It's that 
that that thought process the and i mean it's like you're it's like your 13 minutes it's that's the thing but the, it's but they even your what you've created is still in a weird way very low resolution as to what you're trying to describe and yet mm-hmm. here i am comedically thinking i can speak to you about this thing and try and unpack it even further and i'm in my mind going oh god I, it's so complex but i can you, you could only it, it there's a lot of people that will be part of society and, and i think to make change in anything you've still got to be part of it because to try and make change externally is i think it's a it's a form of ignorance mm-hmm. and it's arrogance because um you know i used to say this all the time because of my background i've been able to help a lot of guys we do a lot of work with PTSD guys, we, but we also work with people who are highly functioning, constantly trying to solve big problems. And because we've been inside their worlds and lived it and played in it and interacted with it, there is a willingness to be like, I've played the same sport as you, so to speak, but we could work together on something and together we could achieve way more. And yeah. I'm going to do my role. You're going to do your role. And I'm going to show up with everything I've got. And I need you to do the same. Because if you do that, you make my strengths stronger and you make my weaknesses neutral. And, mm-hmm. and I think that's where, you know, even though you, what you said is actually, it's almost like it's poetry, mate. It's that synthetic expression. It's like a bubble. It's what John DeVecchi talks about. With, it's a bullshit bubble. It's, and self-deception is the norm. And I think yeah. if I can be prudent, that your art has, it's, it's, it can be a can opener or a light for people to just, I mean, that's, but this is only what I, th- I think, but it was definitely a form of getting people just to stop and have a look without the, the barrage of noise. It's like, just look at this. Cause that's what blew me away is it came out in 2017. And mm. I think a lot of people haven't yet really had a chance to stop and make themselves stop. I might add, make yourselves. I mean, people go, I don't have time. I'm too busy. I'm like, that's the biggest crock of shit. There's no such thing. There's people out there who are very busy that still make time. Whoa. But there's a, a beautiful element of self-discovery and self-recovery that everyone can go on. Yeah. And I don't mean recovery like in like drugs, alcohol, that kind of thing. That's, that's beautiful. If people can please engage in that process too. But I want to talk about what, what seeds have been birthed because of this process for you and how did you continue your own process of discovery and recovery if there was any hmm, what specific specific scenes I, I i don't know that i can right now discern what specific scenes were involved but i'll say that as a whole the piece definitely oh sorry seeds oh. i meant oh, seeds. seeds i'm so sorry seeds. okay okay yeah no, like no. like mm-hmm. new ideas goals visions those types of things um Sorry, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of uh, skipping a beat here. And in regards to the, pro- through the process of making the short yeah, film? Or- making, making the work you've done. And I'm curious as yeah. to when you went through the, the, this whole process of creating the work, what, what new seeds came to you? Because to be able to look back and see what your work's now doing in the world and how, the effect it's happening on the viewers and the community that's engaging with it, is there, is there new, is there more ideas that are coming to you? Is there, is there, uh, yeah, yeah. I definitely there are new ideas, and there are, um, you know, as I, I scale up my ability and my capacity, the difficulties and resistance scale up as well. Yes, <laughs> so, <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They do man. but but you know, that's uh, once you get battle worn, and and you kind of have a few tricks up your sleeve, and you kind of know what it's about, and and you yeah. can, you know you know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, that, becomes a bit uh, more accessible this this path but initially when when the, the first battle you know and i'm framing it in this way because it really felt that way for me and you know maybe mm-hmm. it's a uh, kind of functioning on that sort of like masculine goal yeah drive. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Beautiful- well it's kind of you know that's the platform yeah. <laughs> totally yeah. yeah and um yeah so overall what it did for me well a seed in a way it was I, I was able to work out a lot of my concerns and overwhelm with this, this, these dark unveilings and yeah. the power that this oppressive force, as I saw it, you know, because I, it's, again, that's my, that's my projection out into the world, seeing this mm-hmm. oppressive force is um, I, I was able to integrate and, and deal with a lot of that so that it doesn't impede my, my ascent into sovereignty. 
mm. as much as it used to, right? So the disempowerment that comes from, from sort of blame and, and from disowning uh, the effects of the world uh, have been lessened for me. Uh, and then beyond that, just in, in a more practical level, I've gained a confidence within my intuition and my voice as an artist and a, as a storyteller. And that confidence now I can, you know, without, um, I can claim, I can claim what I can do. I can claim my skills and I can claim without any awkwardness, my, uh, you know, my ability and what I believe I can do. Yeah, man. Now, yeah. So with, and you know, and that was earned and I, I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, yeah. I can say that without, cause you know, anyway, beyond that now, I, as I scale up my challenges, I am, I'm sort of paused, you know, for the last year and something that I want to make outside of my professional career that I feel is very substantial. And um, I have been experiencing, you know, the, the blocks and distractions of the world, as well as the resistance of the material that I'm working with itself. And, you know, this is a screenplay. I'm not going to be too vague, but I'm not going to get into the specifics of it. Yep. But I think it's very pertinent in that my um, leveling, leveling up what I did with In Shadow and the experiment with In Shadow worked. It, uh, it was beneficial to not only to myself, but uh, to some people in the world. And th that invigorated me and that's affirmed, uh, you know, my, in a way, my purpose. Mm. And the, the purpose is to use uh, the mythological framework of storytelling to take the audience on, on a journey within which we invite the audience to participate in an unfolding of, mm. of the individual, of the self, of the hero, of the protagonist. Mm. Through, through uh, the darkness, the challenges, the triumphs, and the necessary uh, agency that, that one must create for oneself, one must discover mm. uh, in order to, to overcome one's inner in incapacity uh, and in sense of insufficiency and in the, in the face of obstacles, in the face of pressure and force. Mm. You know, that can come in the form of like a family drama. That can come in the form of a Mate, anything. Beautifully said, yeah. I was going to say that that comes in that can just be a being being awake in your day <laughs> like yeah. Just, yeah just getting through the day is that is a very much a hero's journey so totally and basically based on our based on our uh, state of you know the gradient of like our achievement like that could just be you know like jordan peterson says getting up from bed making your bed yeah and in your room like that you know that that is a heroic task for someone who has not developed it yet because yeah, it does it fighting through that resistance the cobwebs of uh of inertia i was gonna say so how do you keep there's a lot there's a lot that you do there's a lot of there's a there's a there's a fluency to to how you do what you do but there's there, i need to make a really strong awareness to anyone that you know a level of competence that you've now been able to achieve and then actually and there's a healthy there's now this like you said, there's a healthy level of confidence that now comes and backs it up. Like, you know, you're able, you're able now to reflect on experiences where you can say, yep, yeah, this is, this is how I back myself in these moments. This is what I bring forward to the future. And this is how I know I'm a little, I'm a little bit more of, I'm, a, I'm more of the man I want to be in the world that I'm wanting to uh, bring about. And that, but that takes work. So again, it keeps coming back to this there. How do you, how do you ensure or check in on yourself? when you, you may or may not be deviating from your path, how do you check in that you're not disconnecting too much from reality? Um, you know, how do you still play the game as a free agent? So mm. to speak. Hmm. I mean, I'll say this with a little embarrassment in front of you because, <laughs> you know, you, and, and I'm happy to cut, I'm happy to cut shit out, man. Cause like this is me and you talking. And if there's yeah. stuff that's said, I will always clean it up. Yeah, no, I completely want to be transparent. But in, in terms of you are a high achiever. So I just want to say with some embarrassment that it's I don't always, uh, you know, hit the mark with that. And I think my, my barometer, my barometer, my calibration is my inner sense of the satisfaction. Uh, there's a certain uh, feeling as I've been working more with more and more with my with my body mm. uh, and embodying and being fully present here as I aim to be in the present moment more and more so, wait, wait. when you say working with your body you mean as in i i only heard i heard that two ways that you is it physical training and 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 cultivating it or was it working with your body as in in a creative sense no being with a felt sense of my uh -huh. okay. being in my body and and training and physical physical work 
yep. uh, is part of that for sure. Beautiful, mostly, yeah. Mostly it's sensitizing the body in a way that, because I see the body as the unconscious in a way. Yeah. Uh, that's where a lot of our impulses to avoid are. A lot of our tensions, a lot of our traumas are stored there. And, and, and a lot of people are doing more and more work on this now. Um, but anyway, what I, I, my body calibrates me. So when I, I become more proficient in feeling the raw, uh, gunky sort of, uh, nausea like feelings of not being on my purpose. Right. Yeah. Wow. Instead of like, like many, I'll just speak for men, um, like many men going into pornography and masturbation and and Netflix and all these, all these ways that I think many of us can, can attest to are like, yeah, life force drains um instead of going into some sort of coping escapism yep. um i think i've been yeah i've i've just that feeling has made me sit down and 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 dig into uh successfully or unsuccessfully <laughs> dig but, into so Lubo, like, but this is this is the thing like for those listening like that there's there's something that goes on where i'm like you know there's a reason why we talk about our higher our higher angels or our or our, or our darker demons. And we use those words, not because we believe that, I mean, I mean, you only have to look at history to realize that we really do have demons. Like, you know, I would say that even some of the mythological figures we've created as stories would still look at us and go, holy fuck, you guys are evil. <laughs> like, Jesus. like, honestly, like you only look at history and you go, wow, we've done some awful things. But then you look at history and you can also see some of the most beautiful things we've done. And so, but there's a, there's a realization that both of those are inborn. I mean, this was something I was explaining. I was talking to my partner about. I went, you know, every, any thought of every great thing you've ever thought, every, no, not, not every great thing you've ever seen, every unfortunate, disgusting act of evil you've also ever heard of or seen or even felt was once um, come of a child. I said, every child grows to be an adult. Every adult has to make a choice. And we either contribute, we all contribute to, the manifestation and the, and, and the expression of those things that end up being in reality. So anyone who says that it's that person's fault is just, it's a scapegoat technique of avoidance. And this is where what you just said is so on point with the ability to stop, take stock of what your own biology is saying to you. I mean, this is the same thing. I, I would say that you've literally described what I, what I personally have had to do. And, and I'd still continue to check in and tune and do as all the time is that that feeling is if you stop and listen to yourself, it's, it's really, tr- you're, you, it's, it's hard. It's it sounds wooey, but it's really trying to help you. Like your, yeah. your mind and your body are really actually trying to help you get onto a path that is the path that you should be on. And it, yeah. it's like, and you can go too far. Like you said, there's, 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 there's hedonistic distraction. There's, you know, and one of the hugest problems right now is accessibility. Just because you have accessibility doesn't mean it's going to give you the upside. It can actually give you the downside. I know plenty of men that I had to speak to in private. They just go, I have got some really bad habits. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I'm aware yeah. because you're not doing the other work we've provided. And it just, but then there's, there's distraction, which is, you know, we call that the weekend for most people. And then there's complete despair and disharmony during the week because they're not doing the work they love or they've, or they've not stopped or they've just assumed roles in organizations for some long-term carrot that isn't anything but a figment. And then yeah. they haven't, and they haven't checked in on it because it's either their parents pushing or their own or their, that, what they think they need to do based on society. And then there's also the, the bypasses, you know, yeah. like I'm doing the deep work when in fact I'm just bypassing every single dark emotion on the planet in order to make sure that I feel good. And you make sure that you see the bullshit that I'm putting projects like a Trojan horse. Yeah. And then you've got workaholics, you know, the people who will just work and work and work and work, which is a way of getting away from what really needs to happen. And, yeah. it, and, and it's, I mean, again, these all kind of spin around this, this core, um, well, yeah, well, I feel we have, I think we need a cultural template that needs to be developed by uh, continuous discourse. So mm-hmm. conversations that we're having right now, you know, John Verveke is, yeah. is on his path of doing that. And, and yeah, with his meaning crisis work, but these conversations of what is, because as you, you were speaking about these individuals and earlier when you spoke about it, I kept getting this visual of like, 
it's difficult to come out of this sea of unconscious behavior within ourselves when we're following certain dictates and programs that are not ours, whether they're our families, our formative wounds, uh, the not enoughness of the overachievers, um, yeah. you know, and whatever it is, if I feel we need a template that needs to be discovered and articulated that gives us some sort of bullseye, right? That then doesn't, but one that, that is in a way approached with inner kindness and self-love as well, as opposed to the self-flagellation of like, I must prove I'm the, you know, I must get the rewards. I must get the love through my own sacrifice, et cetera, which is a self-denial. It's bypassing. It's many things. Yeah. So as we're speaking up, the question to me is like, why, why are we here? What, what, what light, what signal can we offer to those who are trying to come up for a breath from the stormy sea, but they can't quite do it? Because a lot of it I see turns into a, the self-improvement project that never yeah. completes itself, right? And like do these workshops, read these, read these books. Um, and then we keep sort of like slipping back into addictions and, and things that at least give us comfort. And so, yeah, go on. No, 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 no. You're, you're just you're just hitting it on the head, Lubo. Like it. This is because this is a podcast for you. So there's going to be a few things. I'm actually I'm going to park, and I'm actually going to talk with you offline about because it's something that when I because I work I'm working alongside and helping um, bring to life some stuff with John and his beautiful team that he's amassed, and you know that in that same light, I can see these little connections occurring that I'm in, I'm in, I'm reaching out to because there's things that I, like example, there's a lot of intelligent, hyper smart people that just have zero commercial background. And that's a problem because if you're going to go into an arena with people who understand how commercial things work, like how the machines and the mechanics and how deals are done, and then you don't have, you don't have a playbook for that. You'll just get eaten alive. And yeah. But the thing is, that's actually what happens to a lot of great artists, a lot of musicians. So we have, a, we have a whole division that looks after creatives and thought leaders because a lot of them are experts in their field. But how do they get onto the field where a lot of their experts have actually died? Because very few, it's like you only have to look very carefully and look at what the world is putting on a pedestal for what is, what they, what is you know, this, un, this, this, like you said, this sea of unconscious it's like, look at where everyone's attention's going. And then, and then as soon as you start, and I'm not, I don't want to take away from some of the people that are actually being found at that level because there are, there are pieces of gold there. But when you start to wade through it and really dig deep, you'll find some incredible people that you've never heard of that will never be found. Mm. And it's really like, uh, there was listening to Lex Feidman. He's like the AI guy. with the, He's got an awesome YouTube channel. And he said it as well. He said, because the more I dig to look for great people, I find that there are great people that are greatly hard to find. And it's so weird. It's inverse to what's found at the top. And I'm not saying that people at the top are not great, by the way. It's more of a, there's a disproportionate allocation. Um, just because those who are getting attention doesn't make it the thing you should be paying attention to. Yes. Because there's a lot of things that are being pushed as, you know, what does our central system, our central, central, central nervous system respond well to? Well, it look at the news. It loves, it doesn't love, but it pays attention to things like violence. Anything that's painful, anything that creates an anomaly, that these are all things that our central nervous system has a reflex to look for. And if I can hyperinflate that, then you're hyper stimulated and then you'll keep looking for it because it's limpic. Yeah. And so, it, you, you, you are, you're always updating this fight flight response machine, never getting the time to stop and really do the innovative deep work because you're in this constant superficial loop. You're in, and it's not reactive. In, and I mean like in a hunting gathering sense, like it used to be but more of a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a really noisy technological fog. And I think one of the, you know, mate, you look so good right now. <laughs> you just, I look very conspiratorial. I actually, I actually like it. I was like, I actually, I'll have to trim the frames because it looks quite artistic. It's really nice. <laughs> oh, did I turn the light on, by the way? Yeah, man, you can turn it on. I just realized just how dark it is for you. And I thought, hey, that's yeah. great. Yeah, one, you hit, hit the light. Okay. So there is, 
so I'd probably say that we're, we're, some of the just uh, just some questions a little bit that I, I really I actually wrote a whole screen of questions. I don't think I've even asked you four of them. I've I've just kind of <laughs> just talked with you. There was what 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 were some of the big influences for you? Because obviously you've 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 you're you 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 seem and hear well read um and so who who were some major who were and who are some major influences for you i know you made mention of like a an informal indirect mentor so yeah I, yeah mm-hmm. yeah for sure you know i'm so bad at, at at putting influences together when people ask me about my film influences etc I'm, I'm always bad at outlining that but um i'll say for the the style of the, the short film itself, yeah. watching the films Kayana Squatsi, Baraka, uh, Samsara. Yep. And those, those uh, there's a few movies uh, with uh, two other films within the Kayana Squatsi kind of like trilogy that really, I think, stayed with me and informed the way that I wanted to approach telling this strange, surreal, um, creating this, this journey, right, within Shadow. So there's yeah. something about being a witness to this theater of, of the macabre, right? Mm. As we sort of like kind of just survey it. It's almost like a dream landscape. It's kind of like a roller coaster through all the, 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 the scenery. And we participate in it just as, a, as this observer. So some, this, that style sort of uh, informed it. But then I think what you're asking more is, is my, I guess, intellectual, spiritual, metaphysical. Yeah, just what, meaning. you know, that garden that you've got in your head. You know, you've yeah. got like you've got a pretty rich mind, so you know that doesn't just happen. Um, well, I I do want to pay homage and, and, and honor Neil Kramer, who I would I would uh, you know um, I would invite people to 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 just go to his website and check out some of his work. Um, Neil, I've I've done personal work with him. We've you know we've we've worked in person, but I've I've also benefited immensely from his uh, from many years of his elucidation of the principles of being of uh, kind of the mystical path of the the western uh initiate western esoteric initiate or neophyte and just as his poetic and insightful view and and um, articulation of that which stands before us and mostly the the the, the unveiling of our true self he has a um, is this yeah. Neil kramer philosophy for living Yes. Yeah. Okay. So remember I said like there's awesome people that are just near impossible to find. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I've just found his website and I'm looking at it and yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And beyond that, I've got, it's, you know, I, um, Dostoyevsky. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Of course. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, lately in the last few years, man, this is, I just feel I'm not going to do justice to giving a, a good indication of what my foundational kind of probably a lot. I mean, is it a, look, is it a lot of, it's a, it seems, is it a cut? Is, a it, is yeah. there a lot or is it a, is it just mainly a, a, a small cohort? Just no, I, I would say it's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a hodgepodge of a lot of stuff, uh, Eastern and Western, um, philosophical and just more practical. Um, okay. So you know, maybe, maybe a better question instead of putting you on yeah. the spot for that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. what, Give us, give us a, and this is, I think this is important for people to realize. It's like, how do you look after your own time? Because you've got an awareness now that you've got a very healthy sense of urgency. You're creative. You know, there's, there's now a level of responsibility that you've now created and earned and now uh, holding up. Yeah. How do you, yeah. How do you look after your time and attention? Yeah. So I, I am prioritizing more and more. Uh, the difficulty within my personal creative work now lies in the fact that I have to do it outside of working hours. So, you know, I still sell my time to uh, yeah. it, it, this right now, right now it's indirectly to Netflix. Uh, so I'm directing uh, some episodes for, for a TV show there. And that takes up my managerial sort of like micromanaging uh, capacity plus my creative capacity mm-hmm. for eight hours of the day. And so I have to have sufficient reservoirs of creative energy and focus afterward uh, to, to put into my other creative work. And to, to, be, fit, to be honest, uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And I'll, you know, just to share, since I guess, we're, <laughs> I guess I'm speaking about myself here, the challenge that lies in between um, relationships. I have mm-hmm. my, my partner, my girlfriend, uh, relationships with my parents, which is something I'm always working to unfold and, and, and deepen. Relationship yeah. with my 
with my brother, my, my friends, and prioritizing, you know, which, which friends really truly uh, can be accommodated. And yeah. that's still a, a, a tricky thing to do when, when people seek your attention, your camaraderie, your friendship, and especially in these times where I feel community is much more important, especially yeah. in person community. So uh, navigating that and, and, and has been tricky, but um, again, I, will, I am working now on calibrating more and more to the felt sense of like, what, how am I giving my gift to the world? Am I just dispersing my time into, you know, I came, I lived a little and I left <laughs> or, yeah, or, uh, or am I now trying to reach that level of equilibrium where my purpose takes me to that? So that the, the mission of, of, of being a storyteller who, who can work, who is constantly, you know, the attempt here is to be constantly honest and authentic with myself to do the inner work always first and foremost is to be truthful, to know, to know truth, to know reality, to know who I am here and to act truthfully with love uh, with those around me. That's the work. That's the main work. That's after cool. that, after that is the, it. it's good. <laughs> after that is the mission and uh, of, of this, you know, this screenplay or whatever narratives that I, I may be in the making in the future. Um, mm. And that encompasses all of my other formative work that now is siphoned into the storytelling so that it can be informed by truth. And so my craft then shapes that in a way that's palatable for the audience and, mm. and fine tuning it in a way that can be uh, an excellent portal from a a greater, higher realm of a higher octave of being mm. and transfer that through the visuals, to the storytelling, to the emotive ability of the, of the storytelling itself so mm. that I can uh, invite people to clearly see an issue and give them a, an, an opportunity to choose to upgrade in a certain way so mm. that we cohere as a whole more and so that we, are, uh, we have more agency, more sovereignty and are able to um, sort of like illuminate ourselves as a, as a whole mm. uh, but uh, and, and mostly on an individual level because that's all we can do this business like fixing everything is you know that's a whole other conversation but <laughs> yeah dude, no, I just, <laughs> I don't think oh, God. It, yeah yeah the leak that springs and springs and leaks and trying to it's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll, it doesn't yeah there's a entropy it's yeah. happening <laughs> it's yeah. Things Absolutely. naturally will fall apart. <laughs> so I think that's really, that's, that's really well said, man. Um, I actually, I've got, I've got a few curious ones. I think one of the, one of the things that pops up to me is, I mean, I wish I could actually go back and pick like the 26 things that just, just kept popping out, but it's like a, a really important awareness. I, I, and I'm going to just put it out there that I want listeners to have is that there's a, a really beautiful flip that's happened within you in mm. over the years. And I'm, I don't know from a bar of soap, but it's a pattern you can recognize. Once you spend enough time with people, Libo, you can, you not only hear it, but feel it. And I mean, if, and the beautiful thing was, you know, I wish COVID was, we would have flown in and filmed and done all this. That's how we love to do the, it's more visceral, more real in person. Uh, and it would have given me an excuse to go see John. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. one of the, one of the things that's really cool is that, most of the deep work, the mission, the vision, the purpose, living that all, the values and the standards that you have to adhere to in your own person and your own ideal, you know, I know that there's always that awareness of your, your future self or your, your divine double that's always kind of still talking and interacting with you with, you know, keeping on the path and interacting. And, and again, like that human side of juggling all the different um, relationships that you've formed with different people and uh, elements of your own world. There's still this beautiful tilt you can feel just speaking with you where there's, it's almost like, uh, like hope, but not, not hope as in like, I just hope it works out. It's like a, a courageous, a, it's, it's courage with authentic expression to build your character in order to help build the characters of others. And in doing so, your work doesn't become just imagistic, but becomes physical and objective in others, in minds and hearts. And I think that's actually the cool thing is your work actually will then eventually become living. 
Mm. And that's, I mean, that, 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 I don't know, like, that's just something that I, I've noticed as I thought, you know, as I'm watching art, is it the art that I'm watching or am I just watching myself? You know, is it, is it what, am, am I, am I feeling what, you know, this artist wants me to feel, or am I just feeling the aspect of what I need to feel in order to move closer to his art? So there's this really, it, it's, and it's, you know, it's, it's near, and the outcome is not to try and get to the answer, but rather keep, keep questing. And I think that's one of the biggest thing is, to question what we do is to quest into what we do. And and I think that's where I'm so curious as to what were those initial questions, which you actually shared, you know, those, those foundation questions that you started to ask yourself and look at the world and look at yourself and, and play that game of in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, and still be able to take part in, in a healthy way, still take, 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 still take part in the divine comedy of what the fuck is going on, but still do the work. And I, and I wrote, I wrote here, you had a, um, there was, yeah. So what, is there any sort of, I'd probably say, what's the, so what, what you've, you've articulated your purpose, like really, really, uh, beautifully. What is, what was the hope or the aim of like, that you wanted to, because the initial starts pretty gripping. It, it's pretty confronting. It does. It has a very, um, Shock, it's almost, I wouldn't say shock and awe. I, wouldn't, I don't want to say it's shock and awe, but it is shock and awe, like in, in a sense, in a very subtle sense. It's very, it's giving you some very clear images that you want people to see. And, but where, where, what's your interpretation of the things that the world is currently going through? And what were you also hoping the work did for others? Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, interesting question. What the world is going through, I believe, right now, um, is is a reckoning and a facing that truly something is something is not right, and something is is it's really in our faces. I think there's a reckoning with the fact that there is evil, but again, mm-hmm. not in a way that needs to be pointed out and and, and completely demonized. And like, we have to recognize our complicity in that evil. And I think we have to, I think it's a time of realizing that our perceptions truly put us in reality tunnels and create our various realities. Mm. And that we need to become authors of that as opposed to just consumers of reality tunnels. Mm. Um, I I feel that there's a, we're in a time where there is an invitation for great courage in the face of, um, of, of great difficulty. And that courage is the courage to think and feel freely mm. as an independent, individuated human being mm. and to claim power in the face of our constant feeling of deficiency and insufficiency, inner power, mm. inner, inner power. Um, so, man, I, I feel, I, it's, it's funny, I think about this all the time and, and I don't have something concretely really powerful and succinct to say right now, but unfortunately, but based on what I just said, I, the reason I created in shadow was part of me was anticipating this. I didn't know something like this would happen or where Mm. this moment will, how it will unfold in the future. I don't know, Mm. but this is the sort of reason why in shadow was created was to, to give a framework and a blueprint more or less, of a lot of the stuff that needs to be faced, seen within ourselves, within our outer world, within this mm-hmm. whole template, this whole matrix that's interconnected to our, our, our perceptions, that we need to come to terms with it, that we cannot, that which we avoid controls us. Yeah. And that I wanted to give the template that there is pain and suffering when the deconstruction of our illusions uh, begins. It's an, it's, that's just how it is because the, we, when we feel lost and unmoored from uh, being grounded within some sort of like competent understanding of the world, when we become un- unmoored and have to start piecing things with our own sentience, it's a very, it's a difficult time. And yeah. the, based on our inner makeup, like there's um, the, de- the degree with which we identify with these illusions, the degree to which we've invested our identity within the illusion of this societal framework and so-called social truths or all these beliefs mm. um, that, t- that tap into our sense of um, uh, moral worth, etc. Uh, those things will have to crumble 
before we reach truth and our ability and capacity, capacity to be in truth and to be greater, to, to really transform into, so, at, at, to a, transform into a higher octave of being mm. in which we can participate in this world instead of just be taken off for a ride with the illusion of free will, as in free will has to be earned through conscious work, right? And so, yeah, and then, so it's, it's this template that we need to look at, at ourselves, at our society. Uh, things will crumble, I believe, whether that's just metaphorical within our relationships, within our inner self, et cetera, for a period. Mm -hmm. And we must weather the storm and always follow that light of truthfulness. And beyond that lies a, a great <laughs> revelation. Mate, I, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, all of what you just said should be just quoted. You should just quote that. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean it genuinely because it, it's, it's really, it's a really, it's a real almost, it's, it's almost a sickening realization that I had, Lubo, years ago when I made the jump to, when I was about 26, 20, 25, 26 to just wake up. I was like aggressive male in the army, kicking doors, wanted to shoot shit, wanted to, you know, like, and it's such a testosterone primitive baseline. And, you know, it's such an animalistic reflex. Like you just take, and, and because everyone else is perpetuating it, mm -hmm. it all feels like it's all part of the game. And then there's this kind of, um, there's a very dangerous illusion that it's sustainable. Yeah. And you think you can do it forever. And it's just, you got to, and this is where the, you know, this, it's like, are you really being who you are? Or are you just being hijacked by your own chemistry uh, inside a cultural narrative, which you didn't create or are even adding to you just along for the ride. And then you realize you're just a number. And so there's, there is such an aware, there is such an interesting thing that happens. And I mean, you'll know this, I mean, with, with solving problems creates new problems and yeah. The challenge is you can't have better problems. So you've now got, you could, we could say that you have now got better problems, but that's only because you faced up to the problems you needed to solve. So, you know, 2015 rolls around, you start thinking about things, you start seeing things, you know, door comes knocking, delivery man says, get to work. 2017, you deliver the work. And there's all these other things that occur that no one even knows about because they're not in your world. They're only seeing a very tiny, low resolution projection of it but the beauty is one of the things that i love that you've actually articulated so well is that this there things crumble like people only need to look at what's not going well but but i think a lot of people put it outside they look at the they'll look at things that are actually beyond their reach and then and i'm going you know come back to home what's just near you that needs work like, and you only have to look, and I mean this, this most, this is like, I hate to say it, but in the most superficial judgment, and I'm, I'm happy to own, own my judgment, the amount of people I meet who, where I have to, you know, in a coaching relationship, I go, how's your health? Mm. You know, you, mm -hmm. let's, let's just start there. Like the fact that, you know, I, I always borrow this saying from a, an amazing guy named uh, Bo Lato. He, you know, the brain was built in a body and the body was built in a world. Mm. And I'm like, if your body is in disharmony, your mind's going to be in disharmony. And it's not some Indian mystic Zen Cohen. It's just fact and science. Like kick your toe and notice how shit you feel. Okay. Now, no, don't take care of yourself and notice what ends up happening. And there's, and there's this weird, there's a, there's a weird uh, a way of thinking that there's a narrative that people think they can just keep getting away with things. And I know that, you know, I'm, I'm living in, you know, I'm living in a, a really nice building. I didn't build and I, I, I do my best to make sure I interact. I mean, I'm trying to put plants everywhere I live just because I, I realized just how important they are. You know, this is, this is, you know, we're trying to move to a, a much more friendly environment where we're not a footprint. And I mean, it's minor in the scheme of things, it's minor, but it's still a part we can play. And I'm just, you know, one of the things that, became really obvious as you were just speaking and, and even in the, in the video that you created, there has to be a willingness to engage in the work, like yes. your own work. There just has to be a willingness and there's no, there is no way to bypass the resistance, but to face the resistance. And that's been the biggest thing that I'm hearing from you. And, you know, there is no seven steps to shortcut success. There is no secret canvas that you hold inside your cabinet that no one else can see. There isn't some magic paintbrush that you've got. There isn't some secret book that you've read. 